All right, guys, now listen. I feel like because I'm so great at this, right? Oh, here we go. I want to just put a, a cherry on top of my masterful selection day. This has just been a masterful day by me. I'm just, I'll pat myself in the back. I got the best clip of the day, <laughs> and nobody can contest this. I mean, nobody. Are you ready? Are you using Are a you, light you look mad, don't you? What, you look why, a mad. why is this thing directed at me? Because I can smell the madness. <laughs> Let's go, guys. Roll clip. Now, this is probably the best footage I've ever seen. I mean, top five. Do you know the flashlight game? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Look what happens. Were we communicating with somebody earlier, just a few minutes ago? Can you do that again by setting off our equipment or turning on a flashlight? Is that Jack? Oh, so we can we can oh. dip into each other's libraries He's now? He's a dirty <laughs> dog. What happened? He's using Jack's huh? footage against Jack? Huh? Oh, you playing dirty. Oh. oh. What happened? Oh, my God. What, what, what happened? Are, look, at, look at the gloves oh, are off. Oh, who is that striking handsome man? Are you kidding me? I'm trying to tell you, man. I'm just way better at this than y'all are. I can find stuff that nobody's ever seen. Like, you know how long it took me to find that footage? Literally like on that. Travel Channel's website. I feel robbed. Hey. I, this is like daylight robbery. Are you gonna phone me in real quick? You know what? Actually, I am. We got Jack <laughs> on the phone here. No. Hey, Jack. Oh, hey, guys. Hey. Hey, Jack, glad that you're on the show. Jack, this, this is my new show called Fright Club. Fox. This is a oh, oh, oh. I mean, do you want to talk about the footage since you see you know about it so oh, much? So, oh, since great. you know about it so much. Well, uh, I will be doing, doing a deep away. dive into the Ghost Brothers back catalog this evening. <laughs> OK. <laughs> Tell us about the situation. OK, so. Katrina Weidman and I, we were at a place called Iron Island. I'm kind of intrigued about this museum. I think just because this building's had so many different faces. Yeah, for sure. The information that we have yeah. is, you know, built in the early 1880s. Then it was a church until about 1940. Mm-hmm. And then it was a funeral home. Yeah. And now it's a museum. It's, it's had a, a few evolutions. And the spirits there, allegedly, if you put flashlights down, they'll communicate to you through the flashlights, almost as if the flashlight is a REM pod. And so I was at one end of the hall, Katrina was at the other. Katrina started asking questions, and the flashlights would turn on. Whoa, that's deep. It was wild. OK. You just shut it a little bit. Can you open it? Open it up. I like this is a laundry chute. Oh, Holy wow. that was rad. That's crazy. I mean, that thing literally just opened up like. Oh, 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 yeah. Yeah. All right, I'm gone. Thank I'll you. Talk to you later. Drops mic. Get out of here. Holy Jay Mass nah. has done it again. Nah. Absolutely. Holy the Osborne himself. Wow, that was crazy, man. Holy that's that's wide open. That was crazy, brother. That was. That's, that's crazy, plan. brother. Because you were good. trying to say something about it. Go ahead, yeah. finish your statement. No, I was like, well, it, there must be like an air vent. I mean, it's air moving through that, but for it's it to close like that? Slammed? Look, we saw the it open and we saw it close. You can't discount the fact that he was calling for that to happen. Now, can you open it? Is that the laundry shoe? I would assume so. That could be pretty helpful, guys. If your hands are full, like, uh, <laughs> could you help, please? Uh -huh. Thank you. The only thing left to do is talk to Jeff Fent. He was a handyman at the house that caught that footage, so I got him on the line. My main man, Jeff, how you doing, man? I'm doing pretty good. How are you? I'm doing well. You got to explain to me what happened with that laundry door opening and closing. Back in May of 2018, I was on the third floor, just sweeping the hall. At the other end of the building, I kept hearing all these doors opening and shutting. By the time I got down there, no noises. Nothing went on for about 10 minutes, and I'm getting ready to leave that hall, and I just turned around one last time and started videoing, and that's the video that you've seen. Wow. That's crazy. Does hmm. stuff still happen? Stuff happens all the time. Mm -hmm. Jeff. Yeah. Tell these guys what you told me about doppelgangers. Oh my gosh, the doppelgangers, we've thought long and hard about them. I had never dealt with that before. It's sort of a crazy thing when somebody says, are you mad at me? And I'm like, no, why? And because I just seen you down the hall, but yet I was in the other building. I mean, how does that happen that somebody sees you, talks to you, but yet it's not you? 
Oh, that sounds like me talking to my wife. She was like, <laughs> Marcus, you never listen. It's my doppelganger. I was it. I was just, I'm a good man, baby. It's the doppelganger. <laughs> yeah, I actually have somebody that could possibly provide some insight. She's a good friend of all of ours. She's a psychic medium and has actually been to the location. Her name is Michelle Bellinger. Okay. Hey, Michelle, how you hey, doing? Hey, Michelle. Doing pretty good. So you're familiar with yep. the Madison Seminary? Yeah, it's about an hour from my house. Oh, wow. Okay. Jeff mentioned that people have encountered, like, doppelgangers and that the spirits have mimicked him. So is that, like, a common thing? Doppelgangers and, and spirits appearing uh, like a person, you'll find that in mythologies around the world, especially, like, my, my own Irish heritage. That's a real common thing. It's usually a really bad sign. If you meet something that looks like you, it's kind of trying to steal your life. Oh, whoa. Do you think that Jeff has any reason to be concerned for his safety at all? I mean, it depends on where he is in the building. So the history of the building is pretty mixed, and there are definitely lingering presences from folks who were up in what amounted to an asylum. And there is a really dark and scary rumor associated with the place about a woman who was murdered whose body was possibly hidden somewhere on the property. Oh, wow. And whenever they start digging, bad things start to happen. Do you think that Jeff can do anything to kind of make the spirits happy? Well, the hard part is narrowing down which one is it, because there are a lot in this location, and some of them are fine, and some of them are really not okay. A couple of them wander, uh, and I've definitely heard stories from local folks who think that things followed them home. Mm. And if I were Jeff, the first thing would be whenever I'm working on the property and I don't want to bring anything home, set some really clear boundaries and, and, and enforcing them. So if you think it's actually following you and you've gotten off the property, like being like, uh-uh, no, no. <laughs> and get shouty if you have to. The only thing more terrifying than one of those dueling piano bars is a haunted dueling piano bar. Hey, <laughs> you right? Yeah. There you go. I know you got me, Jack. <laughs> yeah. Jack ain't holy behaving, <laughs> man. Look, the off the wagon dueling piano bar in Asheville, North Carolina, it might be haunted. And the owner, Ben, has started noticing some crazy stuff on his security cameras. Watch this. Watch the back of the room. Oh. That's the fire exit. Huh. They say that there was no one in the bar, uh -huh. and this is one of those heavy fire doors that only opens from the inside. Whoa. Look at this. Whoa, yeah. you gotta push through the door. You gotta hit it. Yeah. So it wasn't like somebody was on the outside trying to pull it open or nothing like yeah. that. So if you're not convinced by that, you gotta check this out. Watch this. Okay, let's see. Let's see what happens. So you got the two dolls in the front. They off the clock. <laughs> and you got my man, look, look. Watch where he's walking, watch this. Do, 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 do. Oh, yeah, right? Right? It looked like it's he at his head, head, though. Rewind yeah. that real quick. Can you rewind that one more time? One more time. Them. Is that a tray? It looks like a tray was pushed off the top ledge of the shelf. But he doesn't touch it. No, not at all. He's nowhere near it. I thought he might have had a trip cord set, you know, to kind of play Booby it off. trap. But then I thought about it, like, if you do you know have what? a wire, it's going to, like, pull, mm. and it might fall going towards him, you know what I'm saying? And he might drag it. I knew he was gonna be a little skeptical you know. about it. But see, he thought people wouldn't believe him either. Uh -huh. So watch what he did. He went and tried to make sure that he knew what he was talking about. Watch this. Okay, yeah, it was a little plate, like a... Yeah. So he puts it up, he sets it up to recreate what just happened. Ah. Do, 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 I'm just walking. Nothing happens. Uh -huh. All right, he was like, all right, that's fair. Let me try it again. So oh, he's gonna, gonna jump. Oh, I'm okay, he's gonna stomp. Stop it with the big dogs. All right, right. Nothing. 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 Wow. Look at this. Watch this. Oh! That's about 250 right there. That's a 250? Good Look at that. Okay. Look at that. No way. Okay. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> so he's straight up trying to debunk. He's trying his best. I'm convinced. <laughs> you know I'm what? Like... I'm convinced because he's trying so hard to prove that it could have been him. I don't know about the physics of it all, but I believe him now. Well, look, I got one more clip for you guys. You know how they say that kids can pick up on stuff way more than yeah. adults can? Yeah, because yeah. They're, you know, they're less uptight and they're not as closed off? Yeah. Watch this. Look at the little kid right here at the top of the screen, okay. sitting at a chair. Yep. And look oh. at the flag. What is that? Look at the oh. flag. Watch the flag. The kid reacts. 
Holy Gets under the table. Whoa. Like, what is she hiding from? Exactly. How did the kid know that yeah, like something like was happening behind her? Watch, I'm gonna play it again. Okay, let's see. Watch a little girl eating at the table. Okay. Tell you, it seems like kids have that like that extra la, la, sense. La, la. What is she gonna unravel like that? The flag is moving on its own. She feels it. She feels nervous, she gets under the table. Oh, that's creepy. This is a good clap. Exactly. It is, because exactly. I actually felt chills just now. That's yeah. a really good one. Being said that that flag had literally been standing there for weeks. Nothing had happened. Watch the window. It's the left side. Whoa! Did something just peek out? Something peeked over. Right there. Yeah. You did like a, oh, 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 y'all, oh, y'all was out here? I was like, oh, I'll be right back. The thing about this, whatever this entity is that she's captured, it doesn't ever look human. Yeah. But she's caught it multiple times. And what's worse than having something look at you through the window in the middle of the night. Absolutely nothing. What about someone inside of your house in the middle of the night? Except that. <laughs> there he is. Do you see him? Right there. <gasps> and then he's gone. Oh, oh did God. you see that? Something peeked through the cracks. So it's like two eyes. Has she given any indication to, to know what it is? Let's get Rhiannon on the phone right now. She's the one who caught all this evidence. Rhiannon. <laughs> What do you think is in your house? Let's start there. I have no idea. I think there's more than one something in the house for sure. Have you or anybody in your family experienced paranormal activity in the house outside of this? I have, my whole life. I've seen full body apparitions. I've had um, doors in my home open and close, lights flicker. I've had a lot, I've had my hair pulled. Aside from capturing this entity on camera, have you ever witnessed it or heard it? Oh yeah, it knocks on the wall quite often. It's been doing that actually a lot the last hour or so here. Oh, wow. wow. This evening, you're having activity? Yes. Wow. Mm. Are you afraid of what's going on? Um, sometimes I'm afraid because my light went out in my hall. Um, at night, I do find myself like a kid. Uh, when I'm going up my stairs, I feel like somebody's creeping behind me and I'll get really freaked out and I'll run up my stairs. Rhiannon, and I'm gonna bring in a friend of ours, Cindy Kaza, who's a, a medium. And I'm gonna preface this by saying we've not briefed her on anything other than she's speaking to someone and she obviously she knows it's about paranormal. That's it. Cindy, you there? Hey guys. Cindy, you're on with Rhiannon. Do you know anything about this case? Well, you know, I, I really don't know much about the case, but do you want me to tell you what I feel immediately? Absolutely. Like right out of the gate? Yeah. Rhiannon, I really feel that your energy is part of the manifestation of what's going on in this house. If I project myself and I stand outside of your house and I look in, it feels like poltergeist. I feel things are moving. I feel whoa, like you're, whoa. right? Oh, that's whoa. spot on, ain't it? I don't honestly know if they're actually Spirits, I feel like there's a manifestation of energy that's coming partly from you that's creating chaos. So you have to be careful uh, because you have more psychic ability or mediumistic ability than you're aware of. And so the more you start to tap into this energy, the more this power is going to grow. Mm. You have to watch how it affects your emotions. It can affect people psychologically, the way that they sleep, the way that they feel. If somebody's getting angry when there's no reason to be angry, I mean, mm. these are all of the things that can start to happen with poltergeist activity. I've always had a lot of family belief that I had sensitive abilities, but I, I wouldn't even know where to begin to manage something like that. You've had it since you were very young, so when you're unaware of what's happening with your energy and you're unaware of your ability, it can come out in a lot of different ways and it runs in families. So likely one of your children has the same thing. So think of that all working together and creating this energy. Okay. One more thing, um, because I keep seeing all the lights in the house flickering, things with electricity. Dang. Um, I just it just came to me. That's crazy. Wow. That's so crazy. <laughs> You don't have any problems with your electrical wiring, it's your energy. So, like, I feel like you're changing out light bulbs and thinking there's something wrong. It's wow. this it's energy. Yeah. yeah. There, oh. I, I'm not gonna cry. That's wild. Cindy got the juice, y'all. All right, so of all the hauntings and possible entities, there's nothing that freaks me out more than haunted dolls. Agreed. This next clip comes to us from a guy named Jeremy Jones. He bought an antique doll named Eddie for his doll collection. Hold up, this guy collects dolls? Yeah. 
Okay. One night at 4 a.m., he heard a noise coming from his doll room. Dude has a doll room? Where else the dolls gonna stay? That don't sound creepy to y'all? I mean, man, this is. Some people call it creepy, some people call it comfortable. <laughs> this is Creepy Eddie. Let's watch the clip. I swear I just heard the plastic moving again. This has happened like the third night in a row. So that's Eddie down in the corner in the red and white striped shirt. That Chucky's cousin. Who was that? That you up there? Eddie, if that was you, can you move? I'll watch Eddie. That thing was pop locking. It doesn't end there. We have more. He need to move if there's more. That's my giant Tesla coil. This man just went from eccentric dog collector to Dr. Frankenstein. <laughs> He's got yeah. the Tesla coil. <laughs> He's trying to pump exactly. some demons into that. <laughs> Lies! <laughs> <laughs> Seeing if it'll give it any... Uh, Eddie looks stressed out. Ions. Watch his arm. I'm also checking out a new... Oh! Listen. Oh. He wants Eddie to kill him. <laughs> <laughs> Now, check out young Eddie in this final clip. Um, we were doing another live stream, me and my buddy Greg, and he was, uh, we were asking them to move. Ooh. You see his chick in the background? That's Ooh. his number one boo. Oh. This is girl. Should we play it again? Yeah. And he was, uh, we were asking them to move. Oh, no. Who's at the end? Who's at the end? She's like, uh-uh, hold on a second. Who are you talking about? Who are you talking about? No, don't be talking about Eddie. Eddie don't have to move. <laughs> Sit there, boo. Don't move, Eddie. I'll move for you. I don't know about you guys, but I've got a ton of questions for Jeremy. Yeah. He needs to explain he, himself. He got, what yeah. is he doing he with these dolls? He got some explaining to do. Hey, hey. Oh. And you still got Eddie in the back. Yeah, he's, he's there. Burn him. Burn him now. <laughs> Where did you get Eddie from? My wife and I collect a lot of antiques, and we were walking through an antique mall, and there he was. So I had to get him. Have you had any other experiences with Eddie? It seems like every time we get him on camera, he would just do something crazy. His arms would move or his body would move. Are you afraid of Eddie? When you're out there by yourself and you see these dolls move, that scares the heck out of me. So you don't collect haunted dolls? No, I'm not out there buying just haunted dolls. I buy antique dolls, and he definitely fit the bill for that. So Eddie's girlfriend that was watching him, do you have them next to each other often? Well, in our house, we have like a little doll section where all our antique dolls are. Mm -hmm. That doll was in the background. I didn't even notice. Yeah. But people picked it up and I had to go back and rewatch it. I want to bring in a haunted objects expert, Andrea Messitz, just to see what she thinks. Yeah, perfect. Andrea. Hello, how are you guys? So, Andrea, do you think Jeremy could be in danger? Well, there's some weird history to dolls, guys, that people don't really understand. Like, for example, how they used to be used to bind souls, especially of the dead parents who couldn't let go of their children who died. And usually when you find something like this, you're finding something that's a little bit dark, something that he should be cautious of at the very least. Do you think Eddie could be a vessel for the dead? If it were me, I think Eddie is more of a vessel for something a little bit darker than a human soul. And not just Eddie, but there was something about that other one. Mm -hmm. yeah. You could see a reflection in the glass, and if you look at the face, y'all, that face was human. And then it turned. I just think there might be something demonic going on there. Ooh, they gave me chills. chills. Jeremy, do you have any questions for Andrea? Yeah, I'm just curious, you know, any methods that I need to protect myself with. Just realize no matter what you're dealing with, respect is number one. Don't go in there and start challenging it. Just show respect, and that'll protect you a long way.